Everybody said, yeah. Praise the Lord. So happy to be with you. And for our newcomers, I was so happy. I saw so many, 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 many newcomers. I welcome you in Jesus' name. Can you just raise up your hand and wave the hand at me like this, those new people? God bless you. Tonight is going to enrich your life. You will never be the same again. But don't make this the last time of your coming. Keep on coming. I can't hear you. I said keep on coming. Because now you are deeper. If you are deeper, raise up your hand and wave that at me like this. And God put his deep blessings upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Our pastors, our fathers, our mothers, our members, and everybody, all old time comers and you know, new people, members of the church. I praise the Lord for our people here and for you and for the grace of God in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, gallery people, God has lifted you up. You'll keep on going up. And those on that side, praise the Lord for everyone. Tonight, don't say no. God has said yes in your life. Nobody can say no. And you will not say no. Now, for newcomers, I need to serve you notice. Tonight is Bible study night. Did you come with your Bible? Wonderful. We're going to study the Bible today. You will study, and the Lord will enrich your life with the supernatural. Everybody now will raise up our hands as we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this glorious night, wonderful night, beautiful night. Thank you, Lord, for all our members, all our ministers, all our pastors, all our leaders, all our teachers, all our workers, everyone, Lord. Thank you for the members and for those who are coming for the first time today. We're praying, Lord, you will open the windows of heaven and shower blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. This day will be a turning point, a turning around. A transformation night for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody in their heart, take everything away. Concern for husband, concern for wife. Lord, do miracles in every life in Jesus' name. And all those who are in the satellite locations around here, I pray, Lord, everybody will pay attention. And our lives will be enriched in Jesus' name. All over Lagos City, all over Lagos State, all over Nigeria, all over Africa, everywhere we hear this word tonight, Lord, do something specific, spectacular, in every life tonight in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, we're reading from verse 28. John chapter 6, verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? These people have been looking for Jesus. They were searching for Jesus. They were seeking him. And eventually they crossed the river. And they came to the other side and they found him you will find Jesus. And when they found him, then they asked the question, when did you come over here? And then Jesus told them, yes, you are seeking me. Not because you have seen those miracles, but because you have eaten bread and you are full of bread. Then he told them in verse 27, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as the Father sealed. It was then they asked this question and they said, All right, if you are telling us to labor for the things that will endure to life eternal, that means to work, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? 
You might be surprised at the answer Jesus gave them in verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. Look at this. This is the work of God that she believe on him whom he has sent. That may surprise you because they wanted to labor. They wanted to serve. They wanted to work. And he said, show us the work of God. Reveal the work of God to us and we'll do the works of God. And Jesus said, here is the work of God. Believe on him whom he has sent. I'll explain that to you later. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? They look at verse 31. He said, A father's deed each manner in the desert. They're coming back to what they actually wanted to know. A father's each manner. And he ate the manna for 40 years. And now they said, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And now Jesus continued to explain to them. Look at verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Tonight, we're looking at this message. Christ, the bread of life. Christ, the bread of life. Actually, let's look at the gospel according to St. John. He wrote concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gave us great revelation concerning Christ that you do not find in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. The miracles encourage our faith. And his messages demand our faith. The Jews stumbled because they did not understand and did not believe with their hearts. They tried to understand with their heads. They saw the wonders, they heard the words, but they didn't understand what they were hearing. And this is one of the things that Jesus said when he said, I am the bread of life. Actually, when Jesus introduced himself, when he revealed himself, many times over, he told them, I am. That's the first thing I read to you there in that chapter 6 and verse 35. I am the bread of life. Let's come on to John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 12. You see another thing he said about I am. Then speak Jesus again unto them. I am the light of the world. You follow through. It says, I am the bread of life. You cannot do without me. Just like your body cannot do without food. Then he said, I am the light of the world. You cannot do without me. Just like you cannot do without light. We're coming to chapter 9, verse 5. In chapter 9, verse 5, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Everyone in the world, he will remain in darkness if you don't have me. He's the son of righteousness. He's the one that beams and shines the light into our lives. He says, I am, not I was, not I will be. Today, this very day, I am the bread of life. Today and this very day, I am the light of the world. Chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 24. Chapter 8, verse 24, he said, Therefore, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Here it says, I am he. I'm the one that should be at the center of your life. I am he. I'm the one that shall bring life unto you. I am he. I'm that one, the only one, the unique one, the special one that can bring the life of heaven into you. And if you don't accept that, you die in your sins. Look at chapter 8, verse 58. Chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, tell me, 
I am. It says, I am. Before Abraham, I am. At the time of Abraham, I am. After Abraham, I am. What's the meaning of that? I am eternal. I've always been. Every time you think about me, think of I am. Abraham or no Abraham, I am. After Abraham, I am. I'm the eternal one. It says, it's, uh, they have been living so long from all eternity that whatever your situation is, I am. And then you can feel in. Uh, after that, I am. I am your savior. Give me a good amen. amen. I am your healer. Give me another amen. amen. I am your deliverer. I am. Anything you need in your life, I am. Your supplier, I am. Your deliverer, I am. The one that will lift you up, I am. The one that will promote you, I am. The one that will turn your life around, you will climb every mountain, I am. And the one that will give you strength, it says, I am. You begin to understand that this Jesus we are talking about is not a local Jesus. It's not a tribal Jesus. It's not a religious Jesus. It's not a dispensational Jesus. It's not an historic Jesus. It's not a limited Jesus that were boxed into a corner. This is the I am. It's been for all eternity. And it comes to your life today. And when it comes to your life today, the I am of eternity will do something great in your life. Yeah. We're coming to chapter 13, verse... 19. Chapter 13, verse 19, is still telling us the great I am. Chapter 13, verse 19, now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. I am he. Your savior, yes, I am he. Your deliverer, I am he. Your redeemer, I am he. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am he and I am. Chapter 10, we're looking at verse 7. Chapter 10, verse 7. It tells us in chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, unto you, I am the door of the sheep. If you don't come by Jesus, you cannot get to the Father. You cannot get to God. He is the door. And your faith opens that door. And tonight, you'll go through that door. Yeah. He will be your savior. Yeah. He'll be your shepherd. He'll be your supplier. He'll be the all in all in your life tonight. Because I am the door. The door of the sheep. Look at chapter 10, verse 11. Chapter 10, reading from verse 11. Is a great I am. Chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And I'm known of mine. I am the good shepherd. And then he tells us in chapter 10, verse 36. Chapter 10, verse 36. See ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that blasphemed blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God. See, he covers every ground. It's the great I am. It's the universal I am. It's the ancient I am. It's the I am in every life. It's the I am in every family. It's the I am in every church. It's the I am in the whole universe. And tonight is the I am in your life. Yeah. Nothing to fear. Nothing to be worried about. Once the I am, the ever-present one, once is with you, you will cross every river. Yeah. You will climb every mountain. Yeah. You will face any enemy. You will face any challenge in life because the great I am is always here. Anything that anybody does today came after the I am. All those trees came after the I am. All the leaves on the trees came after the I am. If, if anybody joins anything together and then they wrap it together and they form what they call talisman or whatever and they throw it at you, before it gets to you, the I am has been with you. And so 
anything that comes from anywhere, coming from the sea, coming from the forest, and coming from anywhere, the I am is already stable and steady in your life. Anything that comes, thank God you are an overcomer. The only thing you need to find out is to make sure that the I am is abiding with you. It tells us, look at that uh, chapter. We're looking at chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 25. Chapter 11 verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life. Anything that is dead in your body will rise up today. Your brain will wake up. Your mind will wake up. Those dead kidneys will wake up. And any sin, any sin, they're about to take your life. The great I am, it says I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. That resurrection power will walk in your life. And life eternal, life abundant, and lives overflowing will come to you today in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 13, verse 13. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 13. Ye call me Lord and Master, Master and Lord. Ye say, well, for so I am. I am. I am the Master. The Master of storm. I am. The Master of circumstances. I am. The Master of challenges your life. I am. The master of everything there was, everything there is, everything that will ever be, he said, I am. I am the master, I am the Lord. Chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. No man. Don't let anybody deceive you. They don't understand. Because the Jesus Christ is the I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Anybody coming into life with the Father must come through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. I am. I am. I am. The way, the truth, and the life. Thank God you have revelation today. And then he tells us in uh, chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit, much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Without this I am, you'll be forgotten, you'll be of yesterday. Without this I am, the present help in the time of trouble. Without this I am, I am the vine, the true vine. And ye are the branches. Without your connection with him, you'll be nothing, you'll be a no fruit. But thank God, you came here tonight, you're going to begin to be fruitful. And then, he's the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords. He'll be your lord, he'll be your king. Because he is. Tonight we're looking at the special aspect. Christ, the eternal Son of God, the bread of life. There are three things we're looking at today. Number one, the beginning of sacred enduring labor. The beginning of sacred enduring labor. Point number two, the bread for our soul's eternal life. The bread for our soul's eternal life. Number three, the blessedness of our single-minded, exalted Lord. The blessedness of our single-minded, exalted Lord. Number one, give me number one there. The beginning of sacred and during labor. We're coming to chapter 6, John chapter 6. And I'm reading now from verse 27. John chapter 6, from verse 27. Labor not for that meat which, which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, which the Son of Man shall give unto me. I said, which the Son of Man shall give unto me. 
tell me which the son of man shall give unto me you know if you expect something from god tonight you will get because it says labor not for the meat that perishes that's why we you know carve out time because everything we do during the day is for the meat that perishes what does that mean it's for the food we take and then we go to the toilet and we empty everything and then we take it again then we go and empty then we take we go and empty and say don't spend all your life on the food that you're going to empty but you spend your time you spend your skill, you spend your searching for the meat that perishes not, that will be unto everlasting life. What you get today, you will not lose. What you get today, you will not lose. It says, it is that meat that endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father seal. Look at verse 28. Then said they unto him, what shall we do? That we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. He said, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Think about that question that they were asking the Lord. They said, What shall we do? That we might work the works of God. They themselves were still in the dark. Concerning the way to heaven, and you can tell from their questions, you can tell from their lack of understanding. They didn't know the way to heaven. And what's the work of God? To lead sinners out of sin to heaven. And they themselves did not know the way to heaven. They didn't know the source of eternal life. What is the work of God? The work of God is to reveal to other people the source of eternal life. And they didn't know that. And so they themselves must first of all get to the way of getting to heaven before they can lead other people to heaven, which is the work of God. They themselves must identify the Son of God, the Savior, the Redeemer, the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, they must identify Him. They must know Him and they must relate with Him. They must believe Him before they can lead other people to believe on the Lamb of God. What's the work of God? Turning people from sin to salvation. And if they didn't know the way how to turn people from sin to salvation, they can't do the work of God. They must have that first. That's what Jesus was saying. What's the work of God? It is to turn people unto righteousness. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can make us righteous. They didn't know that. And because they didn't know that, they said, well, to work for God, work for God. What's the work of God? You're going to turn people to righteousness and you yourself, you are not turned to righteousness yet. The work of God starts this way. It begins this way. This is the basis of the work of God that you believe on him whom the Father has said. And then you turn to righteousness, then you'll be able to do the work of God and turn other people onto righteousness. What's the work of God? Taking the captives of Satan releasing them from the prison setting them free so that they can go free into heaven and they themselves they didn't even know that 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 is the work of god they thought the work of god what were they thinking of the work of god something physical something natural something go to the synagogue and take a ram and kill this and kill this thought that was the work of god the work of god is to take the captives of satan and release them and turn them unto the Lord free if the son shall make you free he shall be free indeed and so if you're going to take the captives of satan you're going to set them free you're going to open their eyes you yourself your eyes must have been opened you must be turned unto righteousness yourself you must be on your way to heaven What's the work of God? The work of God is a work of conversion. Work of conversion. That's the work of God. What's the work of God? The work of God is a work of grace. The work of grace. The work of grace that brings salvation. The work of grace that brings sanctification. The work of grace that brings strength into our lives. And if they didn't have that, they didn't have the work of grace in their heart. And so we want to work for God. How can we do the work of God? The work of God is it's the work of grace. You have that work of grace in you, then you can start. The work of God is 
the work of conversion. Have that work in you first, and then you can now serve the Lord. What's the work of God? The work of God is preparing souls for heaven. Preparing souls for the rapture. And if you are not ready for the rapture yet, you are not even born again, you must be born again, and then you can get involved in the work of the Lord. The basis, the beginning of working to make others believe must begin with us. We ourselves must believe. The basis, the beginning of leading sinners to the Savior. The beginning of that is that we ourselves must have been led to the Savior. The basis of turning sinners to saints is that we ourselves as sinners we have turned to the Lord and he has made us saints. The basis of making others righteous and heavenly minded is that we ourselves we take the first step ourselves. The food we're preparing for other people we take of that food first. The water we're giving to other people to drink those who are thirsty, we take that water first and then we lead them to righteousness. They become heavenly minded. We turn them completely away from themselves onto the Lord. That's what Jesus said you want to do the work of God this is the work of God that she believe on him whom he has sent do you know that that is how it always works look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 6 Acts chapter 9 we're reading from verse 6 and he trembling this talking about Saul Saul of Tarsus he was going to Damascus he thought he was working for God he was persecuting the believers but now and trembling and astonished said Lord what will thou have me to do now I surrender my life to you I want to work for you now what will you have me to do and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do it will be told thee what thou must do what did he start doing now because now he wants to work for God it's like that question those people ask what shall we do that we might work the works of God he says what shall I do look at verse 9 in verse 9 and it was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink what was he doing look at verse 11 the Lord said unto him arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of one Judas, not Judas is Carol, just another Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, tell me, he prayed. What prayer? Prayer of confession. I'm sorry for all the past things I did. For behold, he prayed. What's the prayer? Prayer of forgive, for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. I did that in ignorance. I didn't know I was persecuting you. I'm sorry for all that. What's the prayer? Prayer for conversion. Change my life. Turn me around. He was praying. Behold, he prayed. What kind of prayer? That now I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. And then it's at this time of prayer, his sins were taken away. He became a believer. How do you know he became a believer? Look at verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Tell me. I can't hear you. Brother Saul. Was he a sinner now or a child of God? A child of God. And it was at the time he prayed, he confessed, he believed, he was converted. He didn't start preaching until this one. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? This is the work of God that to believe on him whom he has sent. And this is what Saul did. He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and now he'll be able to start the work. You will start. Look at verse 20, verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. God. He had believed on the Lord. That's the beginning. That's the basis. That's the source. That's the stepping stone to working for God. And because he had believed now, he could tell them, this is the work of God. Believing on the Lord and serving. Look at chapter 13. Chapter 13 of Acts. Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Acts chapter 13 verse 38 Be it known unto you Therefore men and brethren 
that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. That's where we start. That's where we start. This is working for God that you understand that through Christ you have the forgiveness of sin. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Listen to that. All those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are justified. Their sins are forgiven. God looks at them as if they never sinned in their lives. And the law of Moses could not do that. It says, which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Look up here for a minute. These people that ask the question, they said, what shall we do that we might walk the works of God? If Jesus had told them, you want to do the work of God, wonderful, I need you, I want you. Go out and go and tell people, go and preach. If he didn't tell them what to preach, what are they going to preach? They were disciples of Moses. They will go back to the law. They'll be telling the people, change your morals, turn around and do this and follow Moses. But they ought to believe that the old covenant is gone. The Old Testament was just now in the illustration. Jesus Christ has come. He is the great I am. He is the I am that I am. And he is the I am the bread of life. He is the I am the door. He is the I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. They must know that. If they only knew the law of Moses, I want to work for God, I want to work for God, and they knew the law of Moses, people will not be justified. But now they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they could be justified from their sins, and forgiven from their sins, and turned around from their evil, and the blood of Jesus Christ will wash them, and cleanse them, and purge them, and they will have redemption, and they will have the salvation of their souls, through Jesus Christ, which they could not have through Moses. That's why Jesus Jesus told them, they said they wanted to work for God. If Jesus had not told them, you know what they'll do? They'll go out and they'll be talking about Moses. Moses will do this. Moses will do this. But they needed to know that the old covenant was gone. The old testament was gone. And now that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And that message, the one that gives new life, that message, the one that gives eternal life, that is what they were now to take to everywhere and take to everybody. That's why he said, first of all, before you can say you are going to work for God, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who will take all your sins away. Look at that chapter 13 and I'm reading from verse 40. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days. A work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. They need to have this change of life, this transformation, and this new life in them through Jesus Christ. And it is through that that now they'll be able to walk the works of God. You must be born again. That's what he's saying. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because before you can do the work of God, because that work of God is making people believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Making them look unto the Lamb, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Without that, we do not have the opportunity. We do not even have the knowledge of walking in for the Lord. We're looking at chapter 14 of Acts. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 26. Acts chapter 14, verse 26. It says, And they sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. What work had it fulfilled? Look at verse 27. And when they were come, they gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the the door of faith unto the Gentiles. That's the work of God. That's the work of God to open the door of faith, the door of justification, the door of salvation unto the Gentiles. It is the conversion of the Gentiles that is called the work of God. And if they were going to talk about conversion, the conversion of those sinners, the conversion of those Gentiles, the people turning them away from the old and turning them to the new day themselves must have experienced that. We're coming to chapter 15. Chapter 15 verse 3. And being brought on their way, 
by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. That's the work of God. That's the work of God that they were declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And if you are not converted, how do you make other people to be converted? If you have not been turned around, how do you make other people to be turned around? If your life has not been transformed by the grace of God, if the grace of God has not entered, if the grace of God has not penetrated, if the grace of God has not transformed your life, how can you say, I'm going to make that grace of God? You are ignorant of that. You don't know the grace. The grace must come forth, and then after that, you'll be able to tell other people, show other people the way of the Lord. Look at verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. That's what Jesus was telling them. This is the work of God that he believe on him whom he has sent. First Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1. We're looking at verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Look at verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. But they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. How ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You see in verse 9, they are turned to God. They had repented. They had believed. And their lives have been changed and transformed. They came out of darkness. They came to the light. And now they are the work of faith. And now they are the labor of love. And now they are the patience of hope. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading from verses 12 and 13. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 12 and 13. It says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ. What's the work of God? That because the people said, what are we going to do? That we might work the works of God. Here is the work of God, perfecting the saints. Here is the work of God, training the ministers. Here is the work of God, edifying the body of Christ. How is somebody going to edify the body of Christ if he's not a member of the body of Christ himself? How is somebody going to perfect the saints if he's not a saint himself? That's why Jesus said, you want to do the work of God? Here is the work of God. You begin yourself and be transformed from a sinner to a saint. You begin yourself and you have the grace of God. The grace is salvation. The grace is sanctification. It is when you have that foundation laid in your own life, you yourself will be able to go ahead and then you will have that opportunity of doing the work of God. We're coming to Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. The question is, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And the answer is, this is the work of God that he believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on him whom the Father has said. What's the work of God? Look at this, Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. But watch thou in all things, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Tell me what follows there. Do the work of an evangelist. What's the work of an evangelist? Go out and win souls. How do you win souls if your own soul has not been won? Go out and do the work of an evangelist. Go and evangelize. How do you evangelize? If you yourself, if you have not been evangelized, that's why Jesus told them, you want to do the work of God. The work of God is this, that you will believe on him 
whom the Father has sent. And as you are here tonight, you want to get involved in the work of God, in the work of salvation, the salvation of others, in the work of grace, bringing other people to the grace of God, in the work of soul winning, evangelism, in the work of transforming the lives of other people, the very first step that you yourself that you are going to take is that your life will be transformed. If it has not happened yet, it will happen tonight. And when the Lord transforms your life, changes your life, and turns you around, then He will use you as an instrument, and you'll transform other people in Jesus' name. Uh, we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. What's the work of God? Seeking to save that which was lost. And if you have been lost yourself, and you have not been found, you are lost in the wilderness of sin, you are lost in the jungle of sin, you are lost in the nightclub of sinning, you are lost in the evil, in the wickedness of the world, you are lost in the violence of Nineveh, and you have not been born again yourself, you have not found the Lord yourself, how can you do the work of God? The work of God is to seek and to save that which was lost, and it is when you come to the Lord and you yourself you are found there you say praise the Lord that same salvation of God I'm going to introduce to other people and that same eternal life of God I'm going to introduce to other people and the work of God will prosper in our hands together in Jesus name second Timothy second Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 21 second Timothy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 21 second Timothy chapter 2 tell me your verse Verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself, that comes first, that comes first. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's shoes, and prepared unto every good work. You see that we must first of all have salvation before we can say we're getting involved in the work of God. And then we even go on and we are purged. We're perfected. We're sanctified, we're made holy, we're renewed. Our lives are transformed, and then we can go on in the work of the Lord. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's shoes, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful laws. You are working for God. Flee youthful laws. Follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the name of the Lord, on the Lord, out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. Want to work for God? You must have been changed from the life of fighting and strive and violence and struggling and contention because if you're going to help other people to come out of the violence and the fighting you yourself must have come out you must have believed on the lord jesus christ you have the salvation of the lord and then you are qualified and capable to do the work of god the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if god peradventure will give them repentance the acknowledgement acknowledging of the truth that is the people we're going to talk to they, they must repent to the acknowledging of the truth if we are going to do that for other people we ourselves then must have repented and we must acknowledge the truth of the word of god that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captivity by him at his will. So to deliver other people, we must have been delivered. To save other people, we must have been saved. And to rescue the perishing, we ourselves must have been rescued from perishing. I pray that the Lord himself will do that in every life in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said the Lord will do it in our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming back to John chapter 6, and now we're coming to point number 2. The bread for our soul's eternal life. The bread for our soul's eternal life. We're coming to chapter 6 and verse 31. John chapter 6 
and we read from the start one our fathers did each manna in the desert as it is written he gave them bread from heaven to eat this the, the people are not talking to Jesus Christ they have left the area of working for God now because he had told them he had challenged them take the first step and make up your mind and take a decision and decide for the Lord and have eternal life in you and then you will have the grace and the confidence to go and give that eternal life to other people introduce and reveal that eternal life to other people they said all right we've heard that now our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written they're quoting the word of God he gave them bread from heaven then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. He said, Moses did not cultivate the land to give you bread from heaven. Moses did not do anything uh, to make that bread come. It is the Father himself. Look at this, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Uh, you will see, uh, you need to understand the language of Jesus. They were talking in the past tense. Moses gave, uh, the Lord gave our, our fathers the bread to eat. He gave, he gave, he gave. And now Jesus said, to start with, it wasn't Moses that gave you that. It was the Almighty God that gave you that. But now forget the past. You were not there. Those 40 years in the wilderness, you were not there. All through that time, they took the manna. You were not there. But now you are here today. And your own manna is here today. Yeah. Your bread of life is here today. Yeah. That's why he says in the latter part of verse 32, he says, But my Father giveth you the bread from heaven. Giveth you. Present tense. It's yours today. You'll have it today. Yeah. For the bread of God is he. The bread of God is he. He's talking about himself now. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then he goes on to say, They said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Did you fully understand? Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He will give himself to you today. Because he is the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. In the natural, when you think about bread, when you think about bread and life, those two words, they go together. Bread, life, life, bread. Because no bread... No lie. If you don't eat, you'll soon pass on, pass away, die. Because no bread, no lie. Little bread, lean lie. If somebody has only little bread and is not eating well, he might remain alive, but lean. Little bread, lean lie. Scarce bread, scared lie. But then when you have good bread, you have growing lie, abundant bread, abounding life as it is in the physical as it is in the natural so it is in the spiritual bread and life are inseparable the bread of life starts life you see if you're going to have eternal life you're going to have spiritual life you must start with bread the bread of life you must start with jesus without jesus no salvation without jesus no eternal life Without the Savior, there's no righteousness. Without Him, the bread of life, there is no life from heaven. Therefore, this bread of life, number one, starts life. Number two, saves life. It is Jesus Christ that comes to you as the bread of life. And He fills you. And He feeds you. And He gives Himself to you. And so you are saved. Bread supports life. The bread of life supports life. And so Jesus Christ, as you receive him, as he lives in you, as he abides in you, he supports your spiritual life. Satan would like to tempt you. Satan would like to make you fall. But when you have Jesus as the support of your life, you will stand. 
And then this life of this uh, bread, we're talking about the bread of life, shapes life. Shapes life. Have you seen somebody? What we eat gives us our shape. If you are lean and haggard, tired, weak, struggling to walk, you're not eating well. But when you eat well, it shapes your life. And Jesus Christ, the bread of life, you take him, you read his word, you understand his word, and you believe his word, it shapes your life. The bread of life shields life. It shields you and protects you. You see, what we eat shields us from disease. When you eat well, balanced diet. You're going to find out that all the sicknesses that come and knock people down, you're immune to them. Because the bread of life spiritually now also shields you. Temptation comes, Christ is there, you overcome. Challenges come, bread of life is there, Christ is there, you overcome. The arrows of the enemy might come, your direction, but you have this bread of life, Christ, it shields you. The bread of life sustains life, it sustains us. We are there yesterday, we are here today, our lives are sustained, and we keep on moving and keep on kicking and keep on running, because we have the bread of life. When you have Jesus Christ in your life, and he's there, and he's prominent and preeminent in your life, and you believe him, and he's giving you grace every time. He, the bread of life, he will sustain your life. The bread of life strengthens life. You find somebody who is strong, and he jumps up and comes down, runs here and runs there, and it looks like he's never tired because he has the strength that the bread gives. And Jesus Christ, when he said, I'm the bread of life, it means that when you have me, you will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. Because this bread of life strengthens life. The bread of life suits life, suits life. It just gives you peace and rest, anxiety is gone, and all the fear is gone, and all the palpitation, everything is gone. And you say, praise the Lord, no anxiety and no worry, because the bread of life suits life. You know, sometimes you feel hot, sometimes you feel a kind of um, discomfort inside. But when you take the proper diet, then you're cool. You say, praise the Lord, and that thing is so cool, and it has enriched and refreshed my system. That's what Jesus Christ meant when he said, I am the bread of life. He is everything you need, and he'll give you strength even tonight in Jesus' name. The bread of life satisfies life. Satisfies life. Whatever you have, if you're hungry, there's no satisfaction. You have money, no bread, no satisfaction. You have clothes, but you're hungry, no satisfaction. And then somebody gives you a good meal, and you sit down there, and slowly, slowly, you take everything in, and you're satisfied. They say, take more, and say, for now, I'm all right. I, don't, I didn't know I could be as all right as I am now, but now I am all right. I want to tell you tonight you'll be all right. Every thought you have, every challenge you have, Christ comes in tonight and is the bread of life, you'll be all right. The wind is blowing there, the storm is coming there, the thunder is blowing there, and Jesus Christ is the master of the storm. And he says, I'm the bread of life, and I come to you today, and I come to satisfy your life, you'll be satisfied in Jesus' name. The bread of life secures life, secures life. It's the one that comes to secure us. We are insecure. Anywhere we go, insecure. Uh, Satan is there on the, one, on the one hand. The evil spirits are there on the other hand. And the wicked people are there on the other hand. The people that move in the night, they are there on the other hand. And Jesus said, I'm the Lord your shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And then he leads me the way of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head. My cup runneth over. You set the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And then surely... Goodness and mercy. 
will follow me all the days of my life and I will praise the Lord when that shepherd is there when that bread of life is there it secures your life it stabilizes your life you see the people who don't have this bread of life it is like somebody who has not eaten for the last seven days is walking like this and the wind is blowing him here and there but when you eat well you're solid you're established you are stabilized. And this Jesus, the bread of life, stabilizes our lives. The bread of life spreads life. The bread of life spreads life. It's not only that you eat the bread alone. You give to him. You give to her. You give to them. And you are spreading life. And I pray that God will make you to spread life. It is this bread of life that suffices for life. Suffices for life. When you were young, you needed that bread of life. You needed Christ. Now that you are getting older, you need this Christ. And then by the time you are going to knock at the door of heaven, when you pass from here, this suffices for life. The bread of life spans longevity. That means... You just keep on and on and on. And as your days, so shall your strength be. When we talk of the bread of life, the bread of life and the word of life are synonymous. The bread of life, the word of life, they, all, they both come from heaven. Through him, we have eternal life. Through him, we have the justified life. Through him, we have the peaceable life. Through him, we have the new life, the renewed life. Through him, we have the righteous life. Through him, we have the risen life. Through him, we have the sanctified life. Through him, we have the heavenly life, the heavenward life, the heaven-bound life. We're coming to Psalm 78. Psalm 78, I'm reading from verse 24. Psalm 78. We're looking at verse 24. It tells us in verse 24, Psalm 78, And had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them the corn of heaven. It's talking about the Almighty God. It's talking about the ancient of days. It's talking about Jehovah himself. He gave them manna, the corn of heaven. Man did it eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. That's what Jesus said. It was the Father that sent that to them. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 3. It tells us in chapter 8 verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Who did that? Moses or God? God. And then he says, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. He's comparing the bread or the word. That is the bread feeds our physical body, natural body. But the word of God feeds our soul our spiritual life. This is what Jesus quoted in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Look at this. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 4, look at what he tells us here. And he answered and said, is Jesus answered and saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of of God out of the mouth of God and so you understand that the word of God is that bread of life and Jesus is the word personified in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in him was life and the light of men and that word became flesh and dwelt among us 
and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The bread, the word, the bread feeds our body and the word feeds our soul. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. And I'm reading here from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Did you hear that? Yeah. From tonight, thou shalt weep no more. Yeah. It will be very gracious unto thee at the force of thy crime. Yeah. When he shall hear it, he shall answer thee. Yeah. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall he not take thy teachers be removed, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore Amen. but thine eyes shall see thy teachers Amen. and then ear shall hear a word you see he's saying even though you don't have enough physical bread to eat but this one is going to be supplied the word of the lord the eternal word the transforming word the saving word, the sanctifying word of God. Jesus Christ himself, the bread of life. It says, then ear shall hear a word behind this saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Here is uh, what the Lord is telling us then, that it is this word that feeds us. And I pray that this word that feeds us will never depart from our lives. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I will give you pastors, shepherds, teachers, leaders, ministers that will feed you feed you about who jesus is feed you about who god is and feed you about the way of salvation about the word to life and to eternal life and then the bread of life will feed you to satisfaction in jesus name that's the bread for our souls eternal life our souls abundant life our souls abounding life a soul's satisfactory life. And I pray that from tonight you'll take more of him and more of his grace and more of his goodness and more of his riches and more of his strength will be available to everyone in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Now point number three, the blessedness of our single-minded exalted Lord. The blessedness, the blessedness of a single-minded exalted Lord. We're coming to chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. What a wonderful promise. That promise is for you. Yeah. Say the promise is for me. It says, all that the Father giveth me will come unto me. That's why you came tonight. That's why the Spirit of God did not allow you to stay behind. That's why I said, you must go there. You must go there. Because I'm going to impart unto you the virtue of the bread of life. The strength of the bread of life. And you are here tonight. And it says, as you come, it will not cast you away. Verse 38, for I came from heaven. Not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Yet Jesus said, the Father sent me. He sent me to you to forgive you. And I come to do that will of God. He sent me to you to justify you. To take the guilt and the burden of your sin away. And I came here tonight, that's what Jesus is telling you, to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is that you will be saved. The will of the Father is that you will get to heaven. And Jesus said, I came here tonight so that you can have that eternal life. You'll have it in Jesus' name. Uh, look at verse 39, and this is uh, the Father's will, 
which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I shall lose nothing. He has given you to Christ, he will not lose you. You will not stray away. You will not become a prodigal son. You will not become a prodigal daughter. You will not become a prodigal member of the church. You will stay. You will continue. You will abide in the Lord. This is the Father's will which has sent me. That of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But that I should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which sees the Son and believeth on him. Look at that. Everyone which sees the Son and believeth on him. No matter who you are. Even if you are coming for the first time, that this is the will of the Father, that everyone, everyone that seeth him and believeth on him may have everlasting life. What are you going to have tonight? Yeah. Say, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. That means that on the day of resurrection, he will raise you up. As we look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was committed to doing the will of the Father. And the will of the Father, whatever that will meant, whatever that will interpreted to be in his life, he was always ready to do the will of the Father. It was the joy of his life, the delight of his life. And as you are a child of God, and you are following after the Lord Jesus Christ, that same will of God will become your joy will become your delight in Jesus name look at John chapter 4 John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work you know where we're coming from what shall we do that we might work the works of God. Here is the work of God. That you believe on him whom the Father has said. And Jesus said, here is my joy. Here is my delight. Here is the thing that satisfies me. That I will be concentrated on the will of God. And I will finish his work. You'll follow him and do the same in Jesus name. John chapter 5, we're looking at verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 30. I cannot of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. Look at that. Jesus said, I came, I'm not seeking my own will. The will of my Father is to save the sinner. I do not have anything different. The will of my Father is to rescue the perishing. I don't have anything different. The will of my Father is to get sinners out of their captivity and bring them to liberty in the Lord and bring them to heaven eventually. He says, that's my Father's will and that's my will. If you are a child of God, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the will of the Father will be your will. The will of Christ will be your will. He wants you saved, you will be saved. He wants to change, you'll be changed. He wants you transformed, you'll be transformed. He wants you in the kingdom, you'll be in the kingdom in Jesus' name. He said, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. The will of the Father which has sent me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10, we're looking at verse 7. Tonight, the will of God will be fulfilled in your life. He will save your soul. He will turn your life around. He will transform you completely. He will make you a new man, a new woman tonight in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the bottom of the book. It is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. I come to do thy will, O God. From tonight to the rest of your life, I come to do thy will, O God. Can you say that with me? Can you say that again? Praise the Lord. You see the will of God that you remain with Satan. You see the will of God that you remain in that darkness. You see the will of God that was separated from the Lord. What's the will of God? The will of God that you repent, you will repent. The will of God that you are saved, you will be saved. 
The will of God that was sanctified, you'll be sanctified. The will of God that will stand firm, uncompromising in the word of God, you will not compromise. The will of God that today as you start to journey with the Lord, you will continue forever with the Lord in Jesus' name. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. You will do the will of God. I come in now to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 20. Because it says, this is the will of God that all those who believe on me, I will raise them up on the final day. The rapture is about to happen. The dead in Christ shall rise. And then those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. You meet the Lord in the air. You will not perish. You will not be lost. You will be among the saints of God. When the saints go marching in, you will be among us in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 for our conversation, our manner of life, our conduct, our citizenship is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Subdue all things unto himself. Subdue all things unto himself. He'll do that tonight in our lives. Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Our Lord Jesus Christ is so waveringly committed to doing the whole will of God in his entirety in his fullness. His will is fully submissive to the Father's will. His obedience is only to the Father's will. Always to the Father's will. Ever to the Father's will. As a sinner comes to Christ, he saves and he keeps. Because that's the will of the Father. As the believer abides in Christ, he purifies, he preserves. Because that's the will of the Father. As the disciple continues with him, he empowers and he establishes. Because that's the will of the Father. And as the sheep follow the shepherd, he protects and prepares us for heaven. Because that's the will of the Father. And tonight, he will begin that will in your life. But one, you must come. Two, you must be converted. Three, you must be clean. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. He will purge your life. Four, you must continue. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Five, you must consecrate your all unto the Lord. And then, after you come to the Lord, you go to tell other people and you compel them to come in. You crucify the flesh. And you honestly content for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And thank God you conquer. Yeah. I say thank God you conquer. Yeah. Look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. Not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is sealed with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, you see that, is the bread of life. And then we take of him. He satisfies us. He feeds us. He energizes us. He empowers us. He establishes us. And because we take of him, that bread of life, and say, Christ is mine, is my savior. Christ is mine, is my sanctifier. Christ is mine, is my baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Christ is mine, is my healer. Christ is mine, is my supplier. Christ is mine, is my provider. He provides everything that we need. Christ is our life. And because we take him as this bread of life, and you come to him tonight and say, Lord, here am I today. I need you more. If you have not got him, you open the door. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone open, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. He will come in tonight. 
I said they will come in tonight. And he said, I will sup with him, I'll fellowship with him, I'll abide with him. And if you've got him before, you open all the rooms in your heart, all the areas and the corners of your heart to say, come in here, come in here, come in here. You don't allow him to sit outside, just in the sitting room, you say, every corner of my heart, fill my heart, saturate my heart. And I pray that you will do that tonight in Jesus' name. And then it will affect every area of your life. It will influence every area of your life. It will energize you any area you are weak. It's going to empower you tonight in Jesus' name. You say, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me until I'm satisfied. Feed me until I'm saturated. Feed me until I'm saturated. Feed me until I say, Lord, I thank you because every area of my life you are filled. That's why it says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. You appear with him in glory in Jesus' name. It begins with salvation. And then you move on. It makes you holy and purifies and sanctifies you. It empowers you. Anything you need, Christ is all your need. And it's going to satisfy. It's going to fulfill every need today in Jesus' name. Are you going to take him? Are you going to receive him? Are you going to have him? And then forever he will abide with you. Are you ready? Why don't you stand up and then we're going to pray to them. Stand up and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. You open your heart. You open your heart. You open your heart. You say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. What shall we do? That we might work the works of God. Here is the work of God. That you believe on him. Believe on him whom the Father has said. Remember, is a bridge of life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Lord, I receive you. Lord, I receive you today. You turn away from darkness, you turn to the light. You turn away from evil, you turn to the grace of God. You turn away from the past, you turn to the future. You turn away from yourself, you turn to Him who is your all in all. You see, I'm the bread of life. Receive him like that. Let him be your satisfaction. He says, I am the light of the world. Let him dispel every darkness out of your life. Let the light of Christ come in. Let the ignorance vanish away. Let the darkness of idolatry vanish away. He says, I am he, your savior, no other person. He says, I am he, your shepherd, no other person. He says, I am he, the final sacrifice, no other person. He says, I am he, the Messiah, the expected one. Open your life to him. This is going to be your satisfaction. He says, I am the eternal one. Before Abraham, I am. After Abraham, I am. Before Moses, I am. After Moses, I am. He is the eternal I am. The universal I am. Give your life to him. Open your heart to him. He'll satisfy you. He'll strengthen your life. He says, I'm the door. Anyone coming to the kingdom of God, he is the door. He's a good shepherd. He'll watch over your soul. He'll watch over your spirit. He'll watch over your destiny. He's the Son of God. And He came to this world to make you a child of God. 
Give your heart to him. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I yield myself to you. From tonight, I'll follow you. I'll never turn back again. He says I'm the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life. Your dead spirit, your resurrection. Your dead soul, he quicken. He says, a master and Lord. Make him your Lord tonight. Make him your master tonight. He's a true vine. And here are the branches. Get the nutrients from him. Let him feel your heart tonight. Let him feel your soul tonight. Leave no part of your personality empty. Let him come in. Come in to abide. Come in to stay. Come in to empower you. Come in to qualify you. Come in to justify you. Make him the Lord, the King of your life. And submit your will to his will let your nature be swallowed in the nature of the Lord Jesus are you not eager to do the work of God yes you are what's the work of God believe on him Believe on him as your savior. Believe on him as your sanctifier. Believe on him as a final sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice anymore. If you are going to work for God, that's what to believe. Believe is a final word from the Father. No other beyond his word no other revelation beyond his word believe believe who he says he is accept who he says he is surrender submit to who he says he is Is a bread for your soul's eternal life. The bread for your spiritual life. You can't do it without him. Take of him. Take of him. Take of him every day. He strengthen your life. He'll support your life. He'll sustain your life. He'll secure your life. He'll saturate your life. The bread of life. Want to have peace? Is the Prince of Peace? Surrender yourself to him. He's a blessed Lord. The exalted Lord. The one who gave himself for you. That you might be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on him tonight. Call on him tonight. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be sanctified. Call on him tonight. Whosoever shall call on him shall be healed. Call on him tonight. 
whosoever shall call on him shall be delivered. Call on him tonight. Whosoever shall call on him shall be satisfied. Call on him tonight. He cannot fail. He's never failed. Come. Lord, I come. Be converted. Let him transform your life. Be clean. Let him wash you clean. And continue. Don't look back. Continue. Don't go back. Continue. Don't become a prodigal son, prodigal daughter. Commit your life to him completely, entirely. No reservation. No reverse. And go and tell all the people, spread the bread of life. And spread life. Let him rule and reign in your heart, in your life. Let self from the flesh be crucified. Through him, by him, in him, like him, you'll be more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hand. We are going to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight because we know you are a wonderful God. We know that you have given us Jesus Christ. And he is the bread of life. We are asking Lord tonight. You satisfy everyone in Jesus' name. And as many as have away from their sins. They have turned away from their weakness. And they have turned away from darkness. And they have turned away from anything that is wrong that they come to you tonight for forgiveness. Forgive them in Jesus' name. And I pray that the power of justification, the grace of justification, and that grace of salvation will come to every one of our lives tonight in Jesus' name. For those who are receiving you, Lord, as Savior tonight for the first time, enter into their hearts. Yeah. Fellowship with them. Yeah. Grant them peace of heart. Yeah. Grant them forgiveness. Yeah. Grant them transformation. Yeah. Give them the strength and the grace to go and live in newness of life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, you are the bread of life. You sustain us. You satisfy us. And you are our sufficiency. And I pray that tonight you'll be the sufficiency for everyone in Jesus' name. Bread of life, come in. Abide with us. And every weakness that has been there before as you come in, take weakness away from everyone in Jesus' name. All the doubts and all the confusion, all the anxiety and all the worry, take them away in Jesus' name. And those who are sick, when you come in, no sickness can remain there. You are the healer, you are the deliverer, you are the redeemer, you are the one that breaks every yoke, you are the great physician. Touch everyone, heal them in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, for our loved ones, even those who may not be here. Oh, Lord, wherever they are now, you know how, what concern we have for them. Touch them and heal them in Jesus' name. Deliver us tonight. Set the captives free tonight. With the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone. Satisfy every desirous soul here tonight in Jesus' name. We have come in, will not go away from you. Invited you in, will not drive you out. Abide with us. Remain with us. Continue with us. 
every day of the rest of our lives make us stronger and stronger. And let this life continue to satisfy every need in our lives. Confirm your blessings upon everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.